Marcy, Skylight, Gray, Cliff, and Redfield done. Now the long walk back to the lodge. 3.55 a.m., just signed in. Santanoni range, let's go. The wind is whipping here in the Seward range today. Just finished the Macomb slide and my legs are on fire. Well, I fell victim to the floating logs again. Made it to the top of East Dix. Peak number three of five for today here in the Walking Dix range. Along Avalanche Pass. On top of Rocky Peak Ridge, it's like a hurricane up here. Rain and wind here on Tabletop. Whiteface, number six. Muddy day here on Street and Nye for number seven and eight. Sunny and blue on Haystack. Algonquin, up in the clouds, number 18. Gothics, number 22. Panther, number 38. Allen, number 45. 7, 12 a.m., big slide, Adirondack, 46er. You're listening to the 46 of 46 podcast. May 18th, 2018. Day one on my quest to becoming an Adirondack 46er. I'll be starting with the popular Cascade and Porter Mountains, as many tend to do. It was a cool, crisp spring morning with blue skies. Great weather for hiking today. There was still snow and ice in the higher elevations, but it was melted everywhere else. So I parked my car around 5.45 a.m. at the Route 73 Cascade Parking, right outside Lake Placid. Gather my things, and I was ready to get this adventure underway. I had my walking stick that I found while hiking St. Regis the week prior. It was the perfect height for me, so I kept it, and it lasted a number of hikes, actually. I called the stick Dr. Emmett Brown, and if you know what that reference is to, you and I should be friends. It's from Back to the Future. I had my backpack packed with lots of water, snacks, PB&Js, and I was ready to go. Time to get this adventure going. So I started walking from my car over to the trailhead and then it hit me like a ton of bricks. That dreaded number two. At the time I hadn't gone number two in the woods yet, but fortunately for me that day there was a porta potty right at the trailhead, a godsend. And being only the middle of May, it was relatively clean and unused that day. So I took care of my business and then I walked down the trail and I signed in at 6 a.m. on the dot the first sign-in of the day, and we're officially off to the races. My journey to summit all 46 high peaks in one season begins now. My plan for today on this five and a half mile hike with 2,300 feet of elevation gain was to hike up to the Cascade and Porter trail split, head over to Porter first, then back to Cascade second. As I mentioned in the first episode, I've actually hiked Cascade three or four times in my life growing up here in Lake Placid. But I never once hiked the .9 miles over to Porter on any of those trips. Never once. Probably because every time I hiked Cascade, including once on a school field trip in high school, I was dying by the time I got to Cascade, and the idea of adding another mountain to the mix just wasn't happening. The trail begins with a gradual climb right from the start. One of the reasons this mountain is so popular is because, well, it's a high peak for starters, but it's arguably the easiest and most accessible high peak since there isn't a long approach and you just park on the side of the street at the trailhead and you just start hiking. Cascade also has an amazing summit, so while it's an overly used mountain, it does have a lot of bang for its buck. But so do many other non-high peaks mountains in the Adirondacks as well. The trail's very well traveled and a lot of trail work has gone into keeping up with the foot traffic over the years, so it's very worn and it's very apparent. The trail's mostly some sections of rock hopping, some slab climbing, and then some woods walking, followed by more climbing. I'd say after the initial gentle climb, this hike has three steep climbs. Steep climb up rocks and boulders, followed by the trail leveling off for a bit, allowing you to catch your breath, and then another climb, and then leveling off, and so on. This trail doesn't run along a brook like so many other high peaks trails do, so make sure you bring all the water you'll need for the day. And a good rule of thumb is bring double the water you think you'll need. I'm also a big fan of noon tablets when on the trail, N-U-U-N, noon tablets. They're just pure electrolyte tablets you drop in your water and they dissolve. They're a great option, noon tablets. I was making great time up this trail and was glad there wasn't any snow or ice at this point. I was also not breathing as hard as I had in the past when going up these steeper climbs. Crazy how much more enjoyable hiking can be when you're in okay shape. No sign of people yet as I came to expect since I signed in first on the day. And then as I finished the last climb, about 100 feet before I came to the Cascade and Porter split, I saw a hiker coming off the summit towards me. Huh, I guess I wasn't the first to sign in, I thought. So when he got to me, we chatted for a bit. 
Turns out he was doing a sunrise hike, and he started hiking at 2 a.m. Man, this dude is hardcore, starting that early. As it turns out, today's start at 6 a.m. would end up being the latest start I'll ever have on my High Peaks journey, and I would eventually start as early as 3.30 a.m., so I too would soon become like that guy in this regard, starting super early. I asked if there was any ice or snow up there, and he told me there was a little ice and a little snow on the way to Porter, but that was it. And he told me I didn't need to put my spikes on, which I was thrilled to hear, because I just didn't want to. So we went our separate ways, as he was planning to go hike Giant and Rocky Peak Ridge once he finished Cascade and Porter. So he was on his way down, and I continued up the trail. I then came to the trail junction sign for Porter, 0.9 miles away, which is marked by a wooden sign on a post held up for years now by a pile of medium-sized rocks. It's amazing that a trail as traveled as this has never had the sign secured a little better. I remember that pile of rocks holding it up 15 years ago when I was in high school, and it was probably there 15 years prior to that, so I guess it works since it's lasted this long, but it seems like it will tip over at any moment, but I guess it doesn't. I decided to do Porter first because I wanted to hit that because I've done Cascade many times and I was like, okay, I'm not going to come up here and not hit Porter, so I'm going to go to Porter first. So I began my trip over to Porter, took a right at the trail junction. Okay, I'm in unmarked territory for myself now. Let's do this. Having never hiked here but knowing how popular this hike is, I knew the trail would be pretty evident, and it definitely was. From the junction, you lose some elevation dropping into the coal. This trip down was a bit covered in ice that hadn't melted yet, and I kept debating whether I wanted to take out my spikes and put them on. It would have definitely made the trip a little bit easier if I would have just taken off my pack, put them on, but I just didn't want to take off the backpack. And then have that moment of putting it back on your sweaty back while it's a little chilly up there, and you know you have that, that feeling of putting the backpack on your sweaty back when it's cold. It's the worst. So despite the trip to Porter being easier if I had the spikes on, I opted to just hold some trees and roots and make my way down. It worked okay. Once I was in the coal, I continued on the trail, which is relatively flat and a little muddy. I soon came to a giant boulder that I climbed up onto, and I got some pretty good views at that point. But I wasn't at Porter yet, so I hopped down quickly and continued on the trail. After winding through the woods, I came out on a rocky ridge that felt like a summit, but I wasn't sure if it was the summit. I didn't see a summit sign or a marker on the rocks. I didn't have much experience in the high peak, so I wasn't sure if I was there. So then I took my phone out and I called my 46er buddy Josh, who will end up doing a number of hikes with me, and you'll hear his name often on this podcast. And I asked him, I said, Hey, is there a sign at the top of Porter? How do I know I'm there? He responded by saying, I, I don't remember, but you, you just know when you're there. You'll know when you're there. So at the time, not super helpful in the moment. But when looking back now, it was super helpful in the sense of, welcome to hiking the Adirondacks. There aren't signs at the top of all of the mountains, or most of them for that matter. But it turned out I was indeed on top of Porter. 4,559 feet elevation for high peak number 1 of 46. I summited at 7.25 a.m., 1 hour and 25 minutes from signing in. The summit has spectacular views and today was a clear bluebird day, a perfect day to start this journey. It's a smaller rocky ridge summit, but not a terrible spot to enjoy a sandwich and hang out on. I ate a peanut butter and jelly and took it all in. I was underway, one peak down. The top of the summit meets up with the Porter Mountain Trail coming from Keene, as there's a sign pointing you that direction on the other side of the summit. It was a quiet day up top, albeit chilly as it was only May. So I packed up my gear and headed back towards Cascade. I made great time backtracking back through the half mud, half still frozen trail from Porter, climbed back up out of the coal and made it back to the trail junction. From here, the summit to Cascade is basically right there, maybe 50 yards past the sign as the trail leaves the tree line and becomes a long open scramble to the summit. It was great, and having been up there a few times before, I remember this summit pretty well. One thing I should also mention is always do the rock hop on these rocky summits and stay off all the vegetation. Stay on the rocks, avoid the vegetation. It's a great way to leave no trace while you're hiking here in the Adirondacks. At this point, it feels like you're at the top because of the views all around, 360 degrees during the final approach to the summit. So I eventually made it to the top, marked by a canister in the ground at 8 a.m., exactly two hours from signing in and 35 minutes from the time I summited Porter. So I was back on top of Cascade Mountain, standing 4,098 feet for high peak number two. The summit of Porter was quiet and peaceful, while the summit of Cascade was incredibly windy. Hold your hat so it doesn't blow away, caliber windy. 
Another reason people love this mountain is because the summit of Cascade is enormous and it's amazing. Huge views of the high peaks and huge views of the town of Lake Placid. It's pretty great. And in an effort to get back home, mixed with the wind that was up there, I didn't stay too long and headed back down the trail. My hike down the mountain was fast, and about halfway down, I started passing a number of people hiking up, many of which asked me, man, what time did you start? To which I always responded, 6 a.m. And they were all surprised and in awe that I started so early. Now remember, this would be the latest that I ever sign in. So 6 a.m., in my opinion now, not early. If you're hiking the high peaks, I highly recommend you start early, early, like before the sun comes up. Start early because you never know how much time you'll need out there. I'll probably end up saying that a lot in this podcast. After passing about half a dozen groups of hikers heading up Cascade, I made it back to the trailhead and I signed out at 9.20 a.m., totaling my day at 3 hours and 20 minutes, car to car, nice and short. These mountains are excellent choices for starting out in the high peaks, Though there are also many other excellent non-high peaks choices too with less people, but to become a 46er, they're part of the list, so here I am. A successful first day in the woods on my first high peaks hike here on my quest to become a 46er in one summer. Porter and Cascade for summits number one and two in the books, and I'm officially on my way. Next time on 46 of 46, I'll head to the Adirondack Lodge with my buddy Josh and tackle Phelps and Tabletop and I'll get a first-hand glimpse of just how many unprepared hikers go up Mount Marcy on a given weekend, along with the importance of learning the map and your route before you start hiking. That's next time on 46 of 46. Remember to always leave no trace, do the rock hop, and if you carry it in, carry it out. See you on the trails. First peak down. Top of Porter.